Hi, this is Rob Meyer. I'm working on a quick video update of the uh, custom interactive voice control system I'm building for the full-size Astromech replica droids such as R2-D2 and others. Uh, since my last update, I've got most of the system uh, hooked together here for a test. And some of the additions I, I have here are the, uh, I've now got a temporary uh, strip board here for the Arduino set up and that's connected to the uh, smart VR module through an opto isolator. There's a few functions that are triggering back and forth between the smart VR and the Arduino. The Arduino is uh, taking care of most of the behavior output functions as far as uh, the, the logical decisions that it's getting from the uh, speech recognition module and then it will in turn drive the uh, high current drivers on the full-size droid. Um, I've still got the SparkFun uh, MP3 trigger here which is being uh, triggered from a direct serial connection off of the Smart VR module. I've got the left and right microphones connected and they're functioning properly. Now in this setup they're not attached to the actual dome and so as I'm doing the tests here you won't necessarily see the dome respond appropriately to the left and right side. It may or it may not, but um, it does work when I isolate one microphone or the other uh, so that when the full-size dome hears a voice uh, from one side or the other, it should most of the time respond correctly. I also have the Siren 10 motor driver here connected directly to this uh, Hasbro dome drive. Now, I've got this Hasbro dome set up here for the test just because it's uh, thank you R2 just because it's simpler than having the full size uh, dome up here on the workbench for the test but it is being driven through the Siren 10 driver which could be the same driver you use on your full size dome we've simplified the dome positioning uh, instead of having an, an encoder or something to be able to detect every degree of motion of the dome we simply have a, a reed switch here which gives us the center position. You can see this tiny little magnet here that I've mounted. And so the dome responds again left or right. It'll do a full rotation. This just gives it a center reference to come back to depending on the routine that's playing. Uh, only, you know, besides the left and right responses to the, to the initial voice trigger, the only other uh, dome rotation functions that are going to be happening uh, would be the dance program, the play disco program that I put in there, and some of the negative responses to the do you remember game. So we'll go over a few of those. Uh, so there's no need for more complicated dome positioning than that. We're not doing navigation here any longer, or we're not doing the hide and seek game or anything like that. So this works just fine. You notice that R2-D2 is still playing the random you know, little voice responses here and there. That's part of the normal background programming that you know if you leave the droid sitting static in the room this is exactly how he'll behave. You see here that we've got a, uh, two uh, LED indicators on the Smart VR project board that are emulating the PSI function and that's pretty much going to be a reflection of how it is in the full scale uh, setup. Most all the outputs are going to be triggered uh, through the Arduino except for the PSI indicators. Those will be triggered directly off the Smart VR module. I'm, I'm using that as a, as a functional use of the, of the PSI lights so that we will know if anything ever happens to the Arduino it locks up or fails to boot or whatever the case may be um, if we see a, a failure with the system, we, we'll be able to look at the PSI lights and see if they're still responding to the Smart VR module, even if the rest of the system isn't working. And that'll allow us to do a, a, a quick diagnostic just by looking at those lights. So we'll do a quick rundown of the tests here, starting with the simple things. AR2. Light beam. You see here I have one other LED programmed onto the Smart VR module that, that uh, simulates the HP light right there. And uh, that's going to have a separate driver through the Arduino. Um, 
so that when you do things like the play message command, it'll uh, actually you can use it to tr actually trigger a video player like I'm going to have in mine, or excuse me, or a simple uh, LED HP light or or whatever you want to. But regardless, this this gives us an indication that that function is working. When we'll turn it back off here. AR2 light beam. You see our dome responded appropriately that time to the direction of my voice. Uh, again, in this test setup, that may or may not happen. It just happened to that time. But we'll show you some more dome action here with the dance program. AR2. Dance program. You might have noticed the PSI lights are, are programmed to flash in time to, to that routine also. And then we also have the, uh, the uh, Play Disco program we'll do. First, I'll, I'll show you a, a, voice a negative voice response to, a, uh, to the uh, Do You Remember game. You, you may recall that with the other one when you say, Do You Remember Darth Vader? And he shakes his head. I've done that too. One thing I've done with all the uh, programming on the dome responses, however, is I've slowed them down quite a bit because we are dealing with a full-size dome now, much more rotating mass, and if we were to have it respond quite as fast as the, as the Hasbro dome would, um, it could be hard on the drive system, the gears, and such. Uh, we don't want to be shaking our dome apart, so I've kind of scaled down the rotations. I've slowed them down so they're more appropriate to the full-size dome, but hopefully you still get the same effect. We'll see if he remembers Darth Vader. AR2. Do you remember Darth Vader? Okay, so we got the little negative head shake. And now, of course, he's in his sad mood, which again is part of how the original Hasbro system worked. Um, now he's going to go through a period where all the sounds he make are, are kind of on the negative, you know, scary side of his of his mood, um, and that goes on for uh, five minutes or so, and then he'll automatically reset back into his normal behavior if you have him sitting static somewhere. And also, right now, I do also have the sleep behavior uh, enabled. So if we leave him sitting here for static for about ten minutes without any voice prompts or anything else like that. Um, he'll automatically shut everything down and wait for um, a noise or normally like a, a, a trigger from the from the PIR sensor, which is right here. I, I don't have it set set up on the board right now, and, but um, you know that will be part of the system. I've got the electronics for it all set up here. It's just that the test setup was kind of getting a little overwhelming. So I, I, I left it out of this demonstration. It's only used for the for the wake up function anyway. Um, and then I'll show you one more uh, LED and dome sequence with the play disco uh, command, just because that was so much fun. But I haven't finished the dome programming on that one. You can see that it starts out doing the the uh, the dome oscillation, and it actually does some full rotations in that one. But I need to f I need to finish the rest of the dome rotation routine for that one. You might notice the LEDs on that one are also flashing in sequence, and if you could imagine what it will look like uh, once it's all together on the full-size dome with the with the PSI lights flashing in sequence as the, as the dome is rotating, it should be a lot of fun. So we'll we'll close the video with a short little demonstration of that one. AR2 play disco. So that's the start of that one. That's where we're at at this point. Uh, I'm just about ready to port all this over onto the onto a prototype circuit board, and get rid of all these wires and everything. And uh, when we get to that point, we'll be able to hook it up to the full-size R2D2 downstairs and, and give you a full-scale 
uh, full system test. So that's what we have for now, though. And thanks for watching.